What you don't want to say to a Japanese. Japanese is very complicated with all the kanji characters in Keigo language. But besides that, there's one thing I personally think that you should avoid when you talk to a Japanese person. It is complimenting them. When I was living in the US and talking in English, it was very common for someone to say, nice clothes you have. I love your new hairstyle. But in Japan, this may cause trouble. In every organization in Japan, we have quite a strict hierarchical relationship, like the senpai and kohai concept. Complimenting is considered to be something that a person of a higher rank can do to someone in a lower position. This means the moment you compliment someone, you might unintentionally send out a message saying that I am superior to you. But of course, if this is between someone you already have a great relationship with, this will not be a problem. I'm just suggesting that complimenting someone is not a good way to greet someone new or talk to anyone who is in a higher position than you. Why is it rude to tip in Japan? No, it's not rude. We just don't have the custom of tipping. Most waiters and staff are not educated to receive such money. They will be troubled because they don't know what to do with it. This is because service charges are already included in the payments at hotels and restaurants. If you take a look at the receipts you receive, you'll see an item that says service charge something percent. So if you tip, it's like you're tipping twice, and this is what causes confusion. But then where did the idea of rude come from? Tipping is not rude in Japan, but handing over cash naked is. In Japan, there's a culture of putting cash in a special envelope when you give it to someone to express your appreciation or to celebrate something. Giving cash as it is, is just like giving a gift without wrapping it and is considered rude. As a conclusion, even if you receive great service in Japan, just your most generous arigato would be enough. Why is it rude to not slurp noodles in Japan? No, it's not rude at all. You are free to eat your noodles without slurping if you like to. Someone started to spread this myth because in tea ceremony, the guests will slurp their last sip of matcha to tell the host that they're done drinking and to express their appreciation without speaking. However, slurping noodles has nothing to do with these rules in tea ceremony. The two real reasons for slurping noodles are one, to enjoy the flavor. Two, to eat it quickly. By slurping noodles, air will be taken into your mouth together with the noodles, which enhances the flavor inside your mouth. From the moment noodles are boiled, they start to lose their elasticity and become soggy. By slurping noodles, you're able to eat them quicker in order to enjoy them at their best texture. Making the noodles taste better are the only reasons for slurping. So if you can't or don't want to, that's completely fine. What is Maiko Papalazzi? Maiko Papalazzi refers to a social problem that happens in Kyoto, where tourists take pictures of Maiko walking the streets without permission, or in worst cases, touch their hair and kimono. When Maiko and Geiko are wearing their white makeup and gorgeous kimono and walking outside, it means they're off to work, and in most cases, they're on a very tight schedule. Stopping them will not just affect the Maiko's job, but also the clients that are waiting for them who have properly paid the money. Although the sound of Maiko walking down the streets with their special zori shoes with small bells on them was a symbol of Kyoto, many of them started to use taxis to move around and we hardly see them anymore. I completely understand that many people have dreams of meeting a Maiko in Kyoto, and seeing them on the streets is a very exciting moment. However, if you really want to talk or take photos with a Maiko, please reserve a culture or dinner party where you can meet them. 10 Japanese phrases you should never say to bosses. 1. Gokuro a superior can say this to a subordinate, but not the other way around. 2. Ichiyo tabun. Never answer your superior's questions with these ambiguous answers. 3. Taskaru. You are not in the position to judge whether your superior has done for you was helpful or not. 4. Wakarimasen. This makes you sound like you don't want to understand, so specifically explain where you didn't understand. 5. Ii desu ka? This is too casual. Yoroshi de ka? Is more polite. 6. This implies that you accept it after deciding whether it's good or not. 7. Naruhodo. This makes you sound like you're validating what you've been told by your superiors. 8. Ganbatte. You should never tell your boss to do their best. 9. Gomen nasai. This sounds too casual to be serious. So say, Moshoke gozaimasen instead. 10. Ochiron. Answering with this phrase makes you sound like, Of course, why would you bother asking me that? What are honne and tatemae? Honne refers to the words that come from the heart 
or true feelings, while tatemae refers to public thoughts. It is essential in Japan to be able to distinguish honne and tatemae in communication. For example, when refusing something, Japanese people would often say, tatemae is sometimes considered to be the same as lying. But strictly speaking, the purpose is different. A lie is basically a bad thing that you tell others to deceive them. But tatemae is used to communicate with others while respecting each other's differences without making them uncomfortable. In a collectivist island nation like Japan, it is believed that such a culture was born because people were expected to interact peacefully peacefully with each other without getting into trouble. I hear many people say that tatemai is scary because they don't know what Japanese people are really thinking. But there's nothing to be afraid of because they're just conveying their feelings in an offhand way to avoid direct conflict. Why are toilets so clean in Japan? 1. Because they worship the gods of toilets. 2. Because of Buddhism teachings. The Japanese indigenous religion, Shintoism, is animism and they even thought that there were gods in toilets too. Worshipping the toilet gods was believed to protect pregnant women during childbirth because these gods were the most tolerant to blood, which was considered impure at that time. Also through Buddhist teachings, Japanese people have learned that a person's true nature is shown in the details. So this is why even today, Japanese kids are always taught to arrange their shoes after taking them off, follow strict table manners, and clean their classrooms and bathrooms by themselves at school. In other words, if someone sees a dirty toilet, they would think, oh, the house owner or the leader of this company organization must not really care about their guests. No matter how beautiful and gorgeous the interior of the building is, if the toilets are dirty, Japanese people will feel uncomfortable at once. What if I have tattoos but still want to go to an onsen. There are some onsen in Japan that accept people with tattoos, but I recommend staying at a ryokan with a private onsen. There are some websites where you can search for onsen that allows people with tattoos to bathe in. But I personally wouldn't recommend it because of these two reasons. One, there aren't many facilities and are usually located far away from the city center. Two, having tattoos in Japan could mean that you belong to a yakuza group, so it simply might not be safe for you to go. I would rather recommend you staying at a ryokan with a private onsen instead. At these private baths, not only will having tattoos not matter, but you don't have to mind other people and follow all the tiresome rules, but can go in together with couples and families and still enjoy the relaxing and luxurious onsen. I don't have any tattoos, but I personally prefer going to these private onsen myself because it's simply more comfortable and enjoyable. Five things not to do in Japan. One, doing various things with chopsticks. Especially avoid sticking your chopsticks in your food, handing something from chopstick to chopstick, and pointing at someone something with chopsticks. Two, talking in loud voices in a closed area. A closed area includes trains, buses, elevators, saunas, and etc. Three, sitting on the ground floor. Unless it is a picnic park or a Japanese traditional style room, basically sitting on the ground or floor is thought of as a dirty and vulgar act. 4. Being barefoot on tatami mats. Tatami mats are the floorings of Japanese traditional style rooms. If they get dirty, they can't be removed. So it's best to always wear or bring socks to show respect to the house or hotel owner. 5. Using anime Japanese. The Japanese language has a very strict line between formal and casual, and accidentally speaking like how anime characters do might make some people feel uncomfortable. 8 taboos at Japanese onsen. 1. Not taking off your clothes. You need to take off your clothes fully, and can only bring one face towel with you to the bathing area. 2. Not washing your hair and body before entering the bathtub. You shouldn't make the public bathtubs dirty. 3. Spraying the shower everywhere. The showering areas are very close to each other, so you need to be careful not to bother other people. 4. Not rinsing and fixing the items you've used. Rinse the items you've used at the showering area and put them back where they originally were. 5. Entering from the pouring gate. Entering from near the bathtub's pouring gate is considered dirty and rude. 6. Dipping towels in the water. Towels that might have shampoo on them will make the bath water dirty. 7. Dipping your head into the water. Also considered something filthy. 8. Returning to the dressing room dripping wet. Always wipe your body with the face towel you brought. 